Malawi is a relatively small country in East Africa and it's heavily reliant on farming. In fact, most people in Malawi are farmers. So people have to work their own land by hand and it's back-breaking work. There's no big machines here to help them. And on a good year, a good harvest will feed the whole family for a year and there might be a little left over to sell at market and make a bit of money. And something else that we take for granted, but in Malawi they don't, is that only 8% of the population have access to electricity. So the impact of this is that people need to burn things to do basics like cook food. And one of the easiest ways of finding some fuel to burn is to go to your forest and chop down a tree. But that brings another problem, that of deforestation. And that's when the water cycle is messed up by the trees not being there. You see the trees keep the land really nice and moist. So if it rains, it soaks up very nicely and it regulates when it rains. But if you don't have the trees, that can lead to drought. So when it's really, really dry and in a drought, it's almost impossible to grow food. So the farmers have a really hard time. If it does rain, then that causes flood. And this is because it's simply too dry for that water to soak in. So all it does is wash away the topsoil and any seeds you might try to grow. And it makes it increasingly hard next time round to farm again. So these bad conditions mean that the farmers don't get that good harvest. They don't have any excess food to sell at the market. And people queue up for the little food that is available. It ultimately means that many, many people are in danger of starvation. So this is something that affected William. This is him as a small child here and his family. He talks in his book a lot about how they had to cope with only having one meal a day. But his book isn't a tale of sorrow. Instead, it's a tale of inspiration and hope. William was an inquisitive boy and he loved to go to school and he loved discovering things. The problem he had, though, is that in Malawi, you have to pay to send your children to secondary school. And so when the famine struck, his family didn't have enough money to send him anymore and he wasn't allowed in. That didn't stop him though. He went down to the local library and started teaching himself. So all of this has shown the first of the six C's character. He didn't give up. While he was at the library, he found a book called Using Energy. And he was fascinated by how this book told the story of how you could turn wind into energy. Now this is where he showed amazing levels of critical thinking because he realized that if you could harness the power of the wind to create electricity, many of their problems could be solved. So he started telling friends and family about his plans. But most of them thought he was absolutely bonkers. Where would you get all the bits you need, they said. Well, this is where he showed his creativity because he went around to local scrapyards and he started collecting all the parts he felt might be useful. William used his communication skills to enlist the help of a local welder to help him put together the fan. He came up with a really creative solution to catch more wind by bending pieces of old pipe to make a bigger fan. So the fan was attached to a bicycle wheel which was rigged up to a generator so as the wheel span round it'd create electricity. And this was all attached to a homemade tower which he built in collaboration with his friends. So William had done it. This seemingly crazy boy had proved to everyone in his area that you could harness the power of the wind to create electricity. So lots of people would be really happy here at this success, but William felt that he wanted more than just being able to power a light bulb. So he refined his design and made it powerful enough to recharge car batteries, which in turn could be used to recharge mobile phones. Word began to spread about William's remarkable homemade designs and when the journalist wrote about him, this story was picked up by news outlets around the globe. People were amazed at what William had managed to achieve and this led to him being offered scholarships to finish his education and then go and study overseas in America. And this is where he speaks in the book about having his character put to the test. Because remember, he'd never been out of his country before and there he was in America. He also needed to learn how to communicate with people because he spoke a different language. Also, he needed to learn how to collaborate with people like never before. Those people helped him get through his studies and get him back to where he wanted to be. And where he wanted to be was back home. And this showcased his amazing citizenship. 
to make a positive contribution to the world he lived in. So finally he was able to build a windmill big enough to power a pump that could irrigate the land and allow the farmers to farm more often throughout the year. And among other things, he went back to his old school. He wasn't bitter that they had to throw him out because he couldn't pay his fees, but he went and rebuilt them so that the classrooms were much better and he managed to fit solar panels to make sure they were cheaper to run and therefore more children would be able to attend because the fees were lower. So I'm sure you'll agree that's an absolutely remarkable story and to this day William continues to try to make the world around him a better place. Now I'm going to give him the last word in this assembly. This is what he writes at the end of his book. Often people with the best ideas face the greatest challenges. Their country at war, a lack of money or education or the support of those around them. But like me, they choose to stay focused because that dream, as far away as it seems, is the truest and most helpful thing they have. Think of your dreams and ideas as little miracle machines inside you that no one can touch. The more faith you put in them, the bigger they get, until one day they'll rise up and take you with them.